So to come this morning, I've been at home with Sir Cliff at his manor in Portugal, the Richards Ranch. He's got a hot tub. Just by the pool there, Sir Cliff. Huh? Just like our cameraman, Darren. Just like our cameraman, Darren. Yeah. Always, in... always ready to go, Sir Cliff's, much like Darren's. <laughs> 20 minutes' time, you'll be able to have a look like around his, uh, his ranch, which really is extraordinary, beautiful. Hello again, 21 minutes to 8. Uh, can you believe that it, um, his first number one was 50 years ago with Living Doll? So now you know who I'm talking about, Sir Cliff Richard. Uh, we've all grown up with him. Most of us have. Anyway, <laughs> well, some of us have. And after half a century at the top, he has set himself another challenge. I know lots of his fans have been emailing already yeah. about this. He wants to get a number one hit for the sixth decade in a row. Absolutely. He's got a new autobiography out, out that he's actually uh, written himself. He's going to be coming into GMTV next week to perform for us. But I was lucky enough to catch up with Sir Cliff earlier on in the summer at his pad in Portugal. <laughs> Cliff, hello. I'm fine, Ben. How are you? Very good indeed. This is spectacular. <laughs> well, I think so. Uh, when I saw this, I stood out the back there. I thought, oh, this is fantastic. Well, how old is the farmhouse? Well, this, this section of it, which stretches to my left and my right here, is the oldest part. And they say it's about 350 years old. And I thought, well, they're probably exaggerating. So I'd say definitely 300 years old. And um, I try to keep it the way it was. I mean, obviously, I tidied it up and I redid the roof and dropped it a little bit. What's the story behind that picture, Cliff? Because that... Well, you know, when I first came here years and years ago, in the early 60s, 61 in fact, um, the, I, I used to just go down to the village. Nobody was there. So these fishermen came up and they went, oh, Cliff, come have lunch. And I had lunch with them. And then one year I met some fans and they said, oh, we're having lunch with you tomorrow. And I said, what do you mean having lunch with me? They said, oh, Antonio said, oh, my grand amigo Cliff is coming. And for 50 escudos, you can... <laughs> no! And I see the swimming pool down here. This, this is a stunning. It's about 40 feet long. It's a really nice pool. And I love the way they did it and didn't change that at all. Do you spend most of your time down here or by the pool? Down there, you are locked away in a little oasis of quiet privacy. It, it's just fantastic. Now, look, I can see there's a lovely view of, of some of your vines there. Yes. Is that, do you think that's the best view of the vines? Or is there a better view of the vines? I think the best view of the vines is from my kitchen terrace. How many acres have we got? There are 16 acres under vine, and in total I think it's 28 acres. The whole farm is 28 acres. So how many bottles are you making now a year? We now? can make about 150,000 bottles. I wake up still thinking, how did this ever happen? I can remember where I shared a pair of shoes with my mum. You shared a pair of well, because she worked nights, yeah. I used to wear it to go to school, and then when she went at night in the evening, she'd borrow the shoes. So I can remember those days vividly. And of course, it makes all of this. You know, I'm probably standing before you one of the most grateful people on the planet. You. I've had a single at number one in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and the 90s. If by any stroke of luck, if I could get a single in the, at number one, no matter how, what the state of the chart is in the in the 2000s, the 90s, yeah. it would be fantastic. So we'll try. And it's a specific song that was written for me, and it's about the 50th year. And it even starts, uh, you know, 50 years ago, a kid stood on a stage. So it's a kind of my life story it's kind in of a way. Biographical. Yes. If you want to find yourself in a position where your records can be played in the charts, what about doing a duet album with 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 some very very contemporary young sort of bands? Well, they probably will stop getting played. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what they didn't show was we played yeah. tennis. We went out to play tennis. Yeah. And um, and I don't play tennis. I'm not very good at tennis. I run around and he had me running around all over the court. And all I kept thinking was it was roasting hot. He's going to want to stop at some point. And I was getting really really tired. And I thought I cannot stop till Sir Cliff says we've got to stop. And I was falling apart. Literally, I was sweating. Been out there an hour. And then she said, Hey Ben, should we uh, should we go back in and have a drink? So like, yeah yeah, if you feel like it, Cliff. Honestly, <laughs> I was at. Absolutely shattered. He is so fit. He's a fit boy. It's all that wine he grows up. Yeah, there. the wine and the yeah. living here is a great time. And, and his friends looked after us brilliantly. They made us lunch and we all sat in the kitchen and had lunch. It was a really lovely, lovely day. Good. You have to make a date for your diary because next Tuesday, Sir Cliff will be performing that new single. You heard a little bit of it 
on the tape there on the show. Uh, you can log on to gm.tv and you can see that tennis action. There you go. I did actually play tennis with him. I'm not sure I was playing tennis, to be honest. I was doing some sort of nonsense. He's very good. <laughs> gm.tv. And all you fans who want to see him at number one for the sixth decade in a row, then uh, you have to go out and buy a single. A lot of radio stations are still mean to him, aren't they? Are. They? they are. They won't play it, but you can buy it. Yeah. That's the thing. All right. So this is where you come to forget everything. This is the place where if you're playing tennis with a pro, and I've got, I've got a really good pro who hits the ball all over the place, if you're not concentrating, you can't get any balls back at all. So tennis has been very therapeutic for me. When did, when did tennis become such a big thing? I mean, you're synonymous with tennis now, and then you used to have your, your I big went, tennis. I went out with Sue Barker, and she's the one that said to me, if you really, because I hadn't really picked up a racket much before, that was 40. So, I mean, you really? think most, most tennis players are retired by 32 yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that. So I kind of picked it up very late. But she said, you know, you'll never be a natural tennis player because you've got to start at the age of eight to mm -hmm. get like that. But she said, if you play a, a lot, you'll, you'll get better. You just will improve. And she introduced me to some friends of hers, and I played tennis. I started playing it more regularly, and then I got the bug. And then I really enjoyed it. I'm never going to be getting great shakes at it. But if you hit one shot, you know, if you do just one shot that goes Bam! Cross court, and it's a winning shot. You know why they go? Yes. <laughs> the feeling is so good. So I, I, I just enjoy it. And I never, I don't, I rarely play games. If I play games, it's usually doubles. Yeah. But otherwise, I just get a pro, and we hit for an hour. And in this kind of heat, it's great. It's good, good, good for health. You know, you. Yeah, have you, you ever? Have, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you thought, "I've got to let this person win"? Uh, no, not n never, and not once. That, that's that is that it, but is that 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 that, that competitive? Usually they win anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to let them win. Most of the times I play with people who are so much better than I am that, and I like that because they usually bring out the absolute best in you. And I've had a friend who I've played. In fact, Sue Barker introduced me to him, and we've played tennis over the years many many times. Um, I've only taken one set off him. Really? Well, he was always streets ahead and it seems to me no matter how much I might improve he's also improving at the same rate <laughs> so I can't fair, catch it? up and that's why when you hear about the tennis players you know if the tennis player professional tennis player takes you know for injury's sake it takes six months off it's really tough for them to mm. get back into it because everyone is playing at such a huge pace mm. but everyone's improving like this and if you take six months off you drop back and it must be really hard going for them. I have great respect for tennis players because it's a one-man show. Sure. Them and this other one-man show. And it's very theatrical. I like it for that reason, too. Have you got a greatest tennis memory? I suppose... Um, whether it was a game or whether it was the women well, was a you game, sang? I, or? It turned out to be the longest game played uh, uh, in Wimbledon. And it was between Steffi Graf and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. And I think the game was 21 minutes long, something like that. Don't quote me, but it's some, into the 20, 20 minutes. And you just had the feeling that whoever won that, because it went to deuce, um, advantage, advantage, deuce, advantage, other person, deuce. And you just felt that whoever won this game was going to win it. And Steffi won the game. And she did win the match. But that was quite something as well. Because if for some reason the crowd are not into a match... It may be because somebody is so darn good they're just wiping the floor yeah, with somebody exactly. else. But even if that's happening and suddenly they get a game like that where it is so competitive and, and so close, the crowd just, they, certainly that day, they mm. just absolutely raised the roof. Well, there was no roof then, but had there been a roof, it would have been, been raised. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to be very similar to the crowd's reaction now, Mr. Cliff, <laughs> uh, as, as we take each other on mano a mano, as you said, <laughs> okay. in the heat. Okay. We'll just have a little hit, shall we? Shall we? All righty. Okay. Great. <laughs> Even my sunglasses are burning me. You, you, I, I've noticed you've only bought two balls out. I got two in my pocket. Oh, that's good. I was going to say you've got a, a lot of confidence because these are very low fences for my hiking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it one bounce or two? I can't remember. Yep, it's one bounce only. Oh, yes, that's better. Oh. That backhand looks good. <laughs> A double backhand. It's <laughs> because I'm weak. Have you always played double backhand? Uh, no, I've, no, I don't play tennis, but literally I've just put that on. <laughs> oh! 
Bounces, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> oh that was going to be a killer. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. That was great. You've run me ragged enough. Well, I worked up a sweat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. Pleasure. My pleasure, really. Around. It's a very special place. It is special. Thank you for coming. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you youngsters. Come on, get me some wine. <laughs>